for for work but for my own sanity you know I've been going nuts so Ale Alex said something great yesterday he goes you know what man it's like everybody right now is all they're doing is eating drinking smoking weed and when the and when the economy opens up everybody's going to be so lazy that how can they go back to work how can you start waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning and start working? Or if you're a day trader at 4 a.m. I, you know, we, we, we've been doing this for so long where people go, I, I, have, I have noticed sometimes I'm in quarantine until the weekend comes. Not until Thursday, Thursday, Thursday comes that I realize, oh crap, we're in quarantine. The rest of the week as a day trader, all we do is eat, sleep, trade, right? So we've been prepared for this, guys. So this is what I always talk about, supplemental income. You know, it doesn't take much to start your education. People think that just because you learn to trade, you need a big account to start trading right away. No, this is education. It's like any other skill. If you want to become a nurse, do you start going to the operating room right away or do you go to classwork, right? You, you, do, you read books, you go to class, is education. You want to be any skilled laborer, like a welder. If you want to be a welder, do they let you start welding a Ferrari? No, you, you have to learn first. You have to fucking go to class and learn. So same thing with trading. People, people treat trading as if it's some gambling thing. If you do that, guys, you will lose. I guarantee you, you will lose. The people that are putting in the work and treating it like a true education, like a true school. Think about how much college costs, guys. Nowadays, college is like, I went to college, all that stuff, but right now it's really difficult. The economy's down, people are in debt, no one's hiring. What skill do you have? Unless you're an engineer, being a psychology major or an English major ain't gonna do you shit. No offense to you guys, but that's what it is, man. You, all you guys that went to college, and study these easy majors because you know you want to have fun now you're paying the price no offense that's fucking life that is fucking life guys so what do you do instead of fucking crying about it and crying and crying go do something about it right trading how much are we are we like two hundred dollars a month that is cheaper than any community college that's cheaper than any course and we make more money than the doctors knock on wood if you do it right and what? And you still think it's too expensive? That's the thing that's crazy. We have so many people learning to trade. And learning to trade means this. You pay for the education. Doesn't mean you start clicking buttons. During that time, it's like school. Think about trading like this, okay? You join MIC. It's, it's just like a college, guys. It's just like a college. You learn, you go to school, you watch the teachers, the mentors, who are the teachers. And then you go and get a supplemental income job. We have people driving Ubers or whatever it may be the case, right? You get a job so that you can fund your account. And when you start becoming consistent, now you are ready to trade with real money. Why are you trading real money when you don't even know what you're doing? I see people wasting their lives away and just like getting pissed and then oh i want the government to pay back my loans i'm like dude who the fuck told you to major in underwater wasp basket weeding right stupid ass shit like that i mean dude i don't want i want fun majors too i mean fuck i want to hang out all day but what's the point of going to college the point of going to college is this there's two things okay it used to be you needed to go to college to get a better job but nowadays Having a college degree doesn't mean much unless it's in a marketable field, engineering, something in demand. This is, this guys, this is your first lesson into capitalism. When you graduate high school, the first lesson is this, supply and demand. It's like you getting a degree, no offense to anybody, getting a degree in, in let's say arts. What, what is the demand in art? How many people can hire you for art? How many people are going to hire you for English? It's very difficult. Psychology, things like that. It's all capitalism, guys. Supply and demand, you know? So pick something 
I love a lot of stuff. You know what? I love philosophy. I minored in philosophy. I minored in math just for fun. I didn't need that from engineering. You know what I also studied? I studied computers, which I know would be marketable. I studied engineering. And then the fun stuff, philosophy was fun for me. Philosophy is the, I call it like getting a BS in BS. So think about that, guys. Okay? It's not too late. MIC, stock education, consider this to be a college. Okay? You go, you sit down, you watch the professors, you take notes. There's no difference. But I do not understand where it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to learn to, to um, let's say I, I want to become a mechanical engineer and build a car. Well, the, you know, you're not going to go and build a car right away. You got to fucking go through classwork and all this stuff. Any profession, guys, I don't care what it may be. You want to be an assistant, an executive assistant. You must learn Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint. You don't just jump in and start doing presentations for the CEO. Everything requires classroom work. And if you are lazy, I can't really help you. I don't know why I, I, I went on this rant. I ran this rant because, you know, today's a beautiful day. I, I, I don't even know I was in quarantine until every Thursday comes down and the weekend comes and I have nothing else to do. Today, I'm just focused on work. And then I, I get a lot of these guys, I, I, they don't understand. Like, they're doing absolutely nothing all day. Smoking weed. How much are you just paying on weed every fucking day, dude? So Alex helped me kind of fix me up because I was in that mode as well. I, I gained a lot of weight. Probably gained like 10, 12 pounds during this quarantine. And I was like, shit, man. Then my clothes weren't fitting right. I'm looking like crap. I finally got a haircut. You know? So at least I got fucking hair. So now I feel good. It's only been a, a day and two days. But, you know, I, I ate a salad yesterday. I did not snack. Now my mind is right. My mind is right, I feel good. Which leads me to this, guys. So today, there was so many opportunity. So I started feeling good last night, and you know, I, I was still bitter and angry yesterday. The guy, I, I didn't eat like much, right? I didn't snack, and so I was cranky as hell. So I woke up early today, because I wanted to nail a few stocks, and I did great. In the morning, I did really great, guys. I followed my plan. I followed my plan. I was up like four grand by the time the market opened. Right when the market opened, I was up like four grand. I nailed every fucking stock. And then well, this is th this is the problem. The problem I lost focus. Okay, I was up and I was like shit. So I placed an order on SGBX at around six forty-seven and six dollars and fifty-seven cents, and it was off by a few pennies. Someone undercut me by a few pennies, and I saw that sucker tank a dollar and fifty cents. And that just fucking pissed me off. You know why? Because, dude, I was like so pissed. Because I'm like, dude, I should have banked. I should have, could have, would have. So that's the thing that's the killer, guys. No, you didn't fucking feel. Get over it. Which leads me to the same thing I said in the beginning of this IG Live. You know, you went to college. You got a shitty degree. No one wants to hire you. Get over it. Get the fuck over. Move the fuck on. What are you going to do? You're going to sit here and cry and commit suicide and all this shit? Please do not commit suicide. But I'm just saying, right? What are you going to do? You have to eventually take it like a man. Take it like a female, whatever you want to call it. And, and just fucking get over it. And so that's what happened today. I was crying. I was whining. I was a little bitch. You know, boo, woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. -hoo. Bow, he was up four grand. He missed making another two thousand dollars. Oh, poor me. And that's what I was. I was so fucking pissed and so pissed because I seen people nail that thing. I was like, damn, that should have been me. I saw it coming. I didn't feel. And here I am, a whiny little bitch. So what I do? I said, fuck this shit. I'm gonna start looking around for trades to make up for that missed trade. So I went around and looked for fucking trades. And then I fucking found trade. If you're going to look for something, you're going to find it. Wherever the fuck you want. And, you know? And so I got, I started attacking with RVP. And, and then, um, and then because I was up, that was all the shit up. <laughs> I was like, okay, fuck, I missed this shit. I'm going to fucking slam this shit. So somehow I got like 10,000 shares of RVP and it's going against me. I'm like, what the fuck? There's a low hanging fruit. I'll size up. I didn't take the gains. I was holding a big position. Hoping it'll collapse like everything else, but it didn't. It did not. 
And so I ended up taking a loss. I was up on that. I ended up taking a loss on that. Same thing with MVIS, which I didn't lose much. So I basically lost back half of what I made. Just being stupid. More than half of what I made. Because I was a whiny little bitch. I was, a, I was like feeling sorry for myself. I was so angry. For what? Man the fuck up. Life moves on, dude. It's the same thing with everybody else. You know, boo-hoo-hoo. You know, there are people dying out there with coronavirus. And you can't go to the fucking bar? You can't get a haircut? Is that the fucking reason why you're fucking crying? Because you can't have a haircut? At least you got hair, motherfucker. Some people are bald, right? Or some people have fucking, unfortunately, cancer and their hair's falling out because of chemo. So you always have to put shit in perspective and get over yourself. Okay? So the moment I got over myself, I fucked this shit. I cut my losses. And I'm, I looked at my P&L. To be honest, I didn't even look at my P&L. I was so fucking pissed off. Because I, I, I had a big cushion. And I was like, fuck this shit. I was ready. And so when I was crying, I was like, I was ready to just gamble my big position, my cushion. So I was like, four grand, whatever. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm, never, I'm gonna gamble. I have a big position. I've missed the shit. And so that, that, that's what happens. When, when you get so arrogant and, and you have what you think is a cushion, you end up looking for stupid shit. And so my cushion got blown away big time. I think I closed today like a $2,100. For being up like four grand and I should have been up six grand. That's not shoulda, woulda. Who the fuck knows? I could have fucking filled that shit and covered for fucking loss. Who the hell knows, right? But it's that kind of coulda, woulda, shoulda, anger kind of shit that fucks you up. So the first thing you do is this, guys. You need to get a grip. And this is what having a great tab is. So the guys reminding me, Val, these guys are, you know, I mean, that's a lot. You know, it's still okay. But my anger is not the money. My anger is the, because I, you know, Alex knows that I love trading and I'm a perfectionist and I just hate being stupid. I just hate doing stupid shit because, I mean, there was a time when I used to trade 10 stocks. So today I traded like seven or eight stocks. And the mistake was this. I want to tell you guys the mistake. The mistake was trying to overtrade too many stocks. Many of those stocks were marginal. So what? I was making $300, $400 each one of those stocks. But I'm missing out on the $5,000 plays, the $2,000 plays. So the opportunity cost for me trying to nail everything fucked me today. This happens to me a lot, actually. I've been trying to clean this up. There's two things I've been trying to work on. Actually, three things. The first is holding on to my winners longer, which I did. So APDN this morning, I, you know, I held it great. And that's how I made all that money. So APDN, I did great. I held it all the way from... From where, where did it go? Like APDN, 10 bucks down to nine bucks. Yeah, made all like a point on it, right? So I've been working very diligently on trying to hold the winner longer. And I've also been working on trying to take a stop loss. So uh, guys in the room I've seen, I, I, my stops have been really good because I've been very conscious about it. Because I'm not letting shit slip. The reason I let shit slide a lot of times is I, I have cushion. So the cushion game always fucks me up. The guys in the room know, by 10 o'clock, I'm, I'm usually up. Knock on wood, every single day, I'm, I'm always up. But then I, I get stupid because, you know, like, fuck, I, I'm, I'm bored, I'm sitting around, you know, because I'm trying to help the room. If I was a normal trader, I'd fucking probably go home or do some shit, right? But, you know, I want to help the guys, so I stick around. But sticking around is very difficult to not try to do something. So, But I've been trying to practice that. That's not an excuse, right? Because you want to get to the point where you can sit there and not click a button. You know, I'm trying to uh, to get myself to a better trading mindset. You know, sometimes you have to leave. But you know what, man? I, you know, I've got to the point where I can make money pretty much re religiously every day, knock on wood. I only lose when I deviate or I get greedy, shit like today. So today, I traded like crap. Because I was trying to nail seven or eight stocks simultaneously. And one got away from me, RVP, and so I missed everything else. So stupid. Me, it's like I should just cover that shit up. But I, I was so kind of angry, and so that's the thing. So these are the things that you have to understand about yourself, okay? And I always tell you guys this. It's not the money you make. It's how you made it. That's the most important thing. I made the money in the morning by sticking to the process, not being greedy, not oversizing. I... In PDN, I had appropriate size. I had maybe like 2,000 shares only, 
But, but, but by holding 2,000 shares for a point and shit like that, it, you know what I'm saying? If, if I was in 10,000 shares, I, I might be shaking. And this was still pre-market, guys. After the news that Maxim pumped out $18 price targets. So the fact that I, I, I sized reasonably to hold because it's still pre-market. I can always get back in once the once the open, right? So I'll just kind of like me making my cushion money. Holding a small size and I was kind of like joking with the guys. I'm swinging. I'm swinging means I'm holding for like an hour. <laughs> Not like multiple days, right? So I've been consciously trying to be better. And this is what happens when you're too focused sometimes, guys, on doing a few things right. You forget. You forget that it's a whole process around this. You know, it's not just about stopping out correctly. It's not about just trying to hold onto winners longer. Because what happens is, th is this. When you're too focused on one area, you tend to sometimes forget everything else. So we always say this, go back to your process. So in a way, I kind of deviated from my process. How did I deviate? I deviated because I was too focused on this new thing I wanted to do. This new thing I wanted to do was to swing longer, hold a position and swing longer versus just nailing and belly. You know, there's multiple ways to trade guys. And so my mistake was this. My mistake was, hey man, when there's... When something's in your niche, your bread and butter, capitalize on that shit first. Make the fucking easier money first. And then go back and do whatever. So I'm sitting there looking at my fucking $1 swing, being all happy because I learned a new fucking, you know, because I did something I never did before, like fucking holding for an hour, shit like that. You know? Whereas, so I gave up a lot of like the easier money. It's okay to start trading new things. But just remember, you know, we, we are here to make money, guys. And so capitalize on what you do well first. And then, when you have time, put a little more size to learn new things. Because what's going to happen is you'll become like me. You'll be pissed off because the things that you do well, you, you kind of like, okay, I kind of push it aside. Then I'm looking back like, holy crap, Alex did very well. I'm going to bring Alex on and we'll talk about how he did today. And so... You know, he focused on his niche and everything, whereas I'm, I'm trying to still expand, you know. I, I, I've been going long more often now, as you see. I've been going long, um, you know, just, just trying new things. Because I told Alex that, you know, $2,000 is not going to make a difference in my life. But I like to try new things. But at the same time, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the old side, the old competitive side of me was like, fuck. You know, this, this is a layup trade. SGBX was a layup trade, APDN. You know, it's the same process, right, guys? And so the, the takeaway is this. Yes, focus on new things to be better. But don't forget where your bread and butter is, guys. That's what we always say when you start trading. Pick one setup. becomes your bread and butter niche. And you know what? At all else fails, maximize that bread and butter niche. Because when the opportunity is there, you know with a high percentage, that is your setup. That is your pattern. So, so nail it. Nail it with size. You know? Versus trying to dick around and doing 10 trades for smaller size. So that, that was where my mistake was. I was. My focus was not on my bread and butter niche as I tried to trade it all. Okay. Anything else I missed, Alex? <laughs> so, so let me bring Alex on. Wave your hand, Alex. We want to keep this short. So, you know, I, I was telling the guys, I'm more excited to talk to you guys during IG Live when I'm losing than I'm winning. There's so much more to learn when, when I'm losing. <coughs> you know, fortunately, I don't, I don't lose as much as I can win, but fuck, I just jinxed myself. But, you know, let me bring Alex on here. Where you at, Alex? So this is a type of thing, in my opinion, you should talk to your tab out every day. Don't make it seem like, oh, I'm the best. I nailed this shit. You know, be honest with yourself so that you can break down what you did right and what you did wrong so that you can be better. Today, I feel like I traded like crap. But people go, oh, you did well based upon your P&L. I mean, fuck, it's all relative, right, guys? It's all fucking relative. The, after a while, I'm telling you right now, the money... Is second to the process because if you trade well, 
the profits take care of itself, as you saw. I traded well in the morning, took care of itself. I didn't even know I was up that much. And it was just the pre-market. And then, and then I started to focus on more P&L at the open. That's where I got killed. When you come in focusing on banking, making money, P&L, that's when you start fucking up. Just let it be natural. If you're not feeling natural as a trader, you're not ready to go live trading with size. Go back to paper trading. And by paper trading, I mean this. Two ways to paper trade. One way is to actually physically paper trade. Simulation, writing down on a piece of paper. Another way to paper trade is to use tiny size. To mimic real trading, but it's not much money, like 100 shares, right? 50 shares, whatever it may be, just to mimic the real trading. So you have 100 shares to trade. You can scale in and scale out 50 shares, whatever you want to do. That to me is paper trading. And when you and do it until it feels natural. When it still feels forced, why are you moving up to 1,000 shares and actually being able to lose like $1,000, right? What do you think about CLSK? Well, have you drawn your lines? Everybody that asks me, what do you think about XYZ stock? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you the chart. I'm going to teach you how to draw the line on the chart. Then you tell me what it is. That's the way it is, guys. Stop asking people what they think of this stock. They, to be honest, they don't know. If, any, if anybody that you ask knew what CLSK is going to do with 100% certainty, they would go sell the car, mortgage their house, put it all in. But they do not. So stop asking these guys what they think. These guys are just as dumb as I am, just as dumb as you are with that. They don't know. We don't know. But what we do know is this. We know the setup. We know the chart formation. Okay? And we're going to base it upon the chart at that given time. And that's what you can do too, which you know. So stop asking these guys what they think of these stocks. To be honest, they don't fucking know. If they knew, they'd be a billionaire. So who the hell knows what CLSK is going to do? But I know where the, where's the line. Where's the support? Where's the resistance? Where's VWAP? Those are the things that you should focus on. So when you ask a question, don't ask stupid questions. In my opinion, very stupid question. What do you think this stock will do? That's a, to me, is a very stupid question. A better question would be, this is the is the support at two dollars and ten cents things like that i see the support here i see the resistance here that is a better question that makes sense guys exactly tom the only thing you know is how much you're going to lose that's the only thing you can uh, control we call that predefining your risk guys where, where are you uh alex oh here it is So never ask again, guys, what a stock's going to do. Because I want to teach you what it does. Hey, brother. What's up, man? Nice, nice hair, man. Yeah, the side is good. The top is – I got to meet your uh, ghetto-ass barber to come here. You you look like uh, vanilla ice with a beard. <laughs> that hair. Remember that giant-ass shoe hair? Yeah. What's yeah, up, man? It's just like mine, dude. It's a nice right, view man. there, bro. Beautiful day there. Yeah, great job on your trading. I, I, so – we, we, we talked about how I fucked up, and now, now let's on the flip side. I wanted people to hear your, you know, how your day, because you, you did great. You stuck to the process. You yeah. picked the top three stocks, and you nailed it. That's it. Yeah, so let's, let's kind of talk about it from the beginning. So the first thing was SGBX, right? So this stock, pre-market, pre-market went from $5 to $9 pre-market, and the float was really low. So that in the morning seemed like it was going to be the hot chick of the day, but Actually, you found out some information on it. We saw that there was an S3 that was amended. So we have like a bunch of videos on this stuff, but long very story recent short. Very recent That's the thing. Very recent. Exactly. It's very recent. I think they amended it, what, yesterday or the day before? Something like that. But anytime one of these companies does like an amended S3, chances are the effect is going to come within the next couple of days. So I was actually telling Bao and Tosh, and I put it in the, uh, the room this morning, that, you know, most uh, of the uh, times... A, a quick thing. So an S3 is a filing for a... Shelf. A, dilution. Shelf, right, correct. So they're raising funds for the company. Correct. And when they do that, the price ends up going down because they dilute their shares. More supply into the market, less demand means price goes down. And not, so, not only that, usually these are priced way lower. They're way the market under market, market value. Usually yeah. like 30% under market value because that's the only way that these shitty companies could get money, right? Um, so 
what we saw is we saw that they had an amended S3 from before. And if you don't know what an S3 is, or if you don't know what an effect is, we have a free fundamental analysis series at MIC. So that covers all that stuff. But long story short, most of these companies, <clears throat> when they have an amendment, it means that the effect is close. So my thought process this morning was that they were pumping it uh, pre-market on low, <laughs> on, <laughs> on low volume. And the reason why they were doing that is so that the underwriters could get short ahead of time, which would lead to the price going down. <laughs> I don't think anyone was fucking paying attention to that, dude. I think everyone was looking at fucking your screen. That, hey, that's the hot shit of the day. I'm avoiding it. <laughs> but that's it, has, man. I hope she has the side chicks. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker. Even when he's not fucking trading, he's still looking at the side chicks. <laughs> I might go back there and what's on the back side. Oh, the big side. <laughs> A lot of meat on the backside. Anyway, okay, that was bad. That was so bad. I know, that was funny, man. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, I forgo- backside, Honestly, I forgot. Dude. All I just heard was fucking backside and side chick, and that's it. <sighs> okay, let's start, start over. What's going on? <laughs> um, yeah, so long, let, me, let me put these fucking spark notes on. Let me make it extremely fast. So long story short, we noticed that there was potential dilution coming on the stock. And then we saw that the stock went from $9 to like $6 pre-market. So pre-market, the chart had already formed. So to me, when we had this pending dilution, we had the chart with $2 worth of bag holders on top, and we had an expensive locate fee. That to me said that a lot of shorts weren't being (laughs) bought. (laughs) Everyone's like, go back, go back, go back. Fuck the stock shit. (sighs) Go ahead, go ahead. That's it, bro. That's it. I basically waited for the stock. To, it's the same stupid shit that we say every single day. Wait for the stock to tank and short the bounce. That's all I've been yep. doing every single day, bro. Every single day. Today so, was 8,000. I mean, it's, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. So this is, what, well, this is a nutshell what happens. You wait for these stocks to peak out. And then they do what we call a stuff move or a death candle. Correct. You know, I hate those terms, but you can look it on, you can look it on the – candlestick chart and see a death candle down or basically yeah. a walk down the point is there's some sort of re, a retracement that takes the stock under VWAP that's the key this stock started walking way under VWAP and so boom back holder city that's yep. all we do we wait for the top and then we scale the bounce exactly exactly so our plan was to actually short towards like eight dollars and then it went to 750 and then seven dollars and then I think we both got the 650 line together which was great. Yeah. Yep. Now, so, it, now it's at four bucks. It's at four fucking dollars? Actually, I don't know. I have to fucking check. Oh, I think it was trading at four four eighty, oh, four four seventy. I, I yep. closed my setup. Give me a sec. Let me open it back up. Uh four eighty one. Wow. And today the top pre market was nine dollars. So almost fifty percent down intraday from the highs. Which is fucking oh. crazy. You know, you know, it's kind of like, man, we we wait for one of these stocks to just blow everybody under the out of the water. Yeah. And so I think everyone was kind of scared to size or anything yep. like that. Locals yep. were also today, ten cents a share, man. Yeah, and I only used two thousand shares. I was telling you, I was like, bro, I'm too cheap to fucking pay for a lot of it, so I'm just gonna get two thousand shares. And two thousand shares was already two hundred bucks. But with those two thousand shares, I was able to make fucking five grand, which is almost fucking, damn, dude, like a dollar, like two dollars and a half a share. I, I did the same thing, man. I, I located 2,000 shares. Actually, 3,000. Fuck. And then I put <laughs> all my order at the 650 line. It fucking off my five cents. And that's the start yeah. of the whole thing. But, yeah, um, but, but that's it, man. It just goes to show that today, I stuck to the stocks that really people weren't paying attention to. But honestly, the best trade of the day was APDN, bro. That was a low-hanging fruit that had a pump PR in the morning pre-market to the outer lines and then went all the way back red. Like, that was a gimme, bro. That was an unbelievable gimme trade right there. And it was in the yep. watch list. You know, let me show yep. the watch list. Give me a sec. So, so Faye is now kicking butt. So, now I'm going to take profits from her because I fucked up. Now, list. Faye is stealing our, <laughs> our fills, bro. Yo, that's, that's a beauty, man. I'm telling you. Faye, you know, Faye is one of those super disciplined traders. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. Nice color here. Well, now the bird is shaking his ass. Is that what they call girls nowadays? Birds or something? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Faye's a great example of discipline. You, you see that? Here I am. You know, I, with all the skill in the world, all the experience in the world, 
But I fuck up today because it all comes down to the process and the discipline. When you break your mental discipline, doesn't matter you're the best trader, the best NBA player, the best anything. Half of it is your mind. You have to yep. be able to translate your plan, your mind, and execute. And if you are off today, for some, some reason, shit like this happens. And I'm yep. telling you guys, I'm telling you, if, in the past, when I was younger, I would be in this situation often. I have a monster open. I used to trade even bigger, right? Like right now, I'm just trading whatever. But I would be a monster. And then I, there'll be one little stupid shit like today. Like I didn't feel I should have been made another 10 grand or whatever the hell it is. Yep. And then, I, and then what, next thing you know, I start bleeding all my cushion. So today, I bled 4000 to 2000 And I was like, this is a trader maturity. I just locked it up. I said, fuck this shit. I'm not, I'm not going to fucking do anymore. Whereas before, you're like, fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. And then you get into this. Mental collapse, and next thing you know, you're up 4,000. Now you're down 4,000. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing. You know, so sometimes you – so so having a tab, guys, this, this is where the tab comes in. Alex reminded me, you know what, man? And, and the, the room kind of reminds me. I got to do my IG live, so I left. But Alex was like, you know what? Everything is back into perspective, guys. You know, even $500 is a lot of money. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's why I, I talked about crying in the beginning. Like, stop. Right. I was just, like, just get it over, man. It's, it's like I was telling you, too. I'm like, bro, the stimulus check was $1,200, and you fucked up today and made 2000 You know? It's all perspective, man. It's crazy. It's something. It's weird. The problem is we're so detached from the money. Where we don't really think about it because we're so process-driven. But, you know, pulling out money and putting it into our bank account, paying ourselves is essentially the only way that we could attach value to it. Or else, like you said a billion times, it's an endless video game where the high score never fucking ends. Yep. And to think, this is a $35,000 account, guys, that we set. You yep. know, it was up, I mean, to make, to make that kind of money on a $35,000 account, that, this is the normality of it. You see what I'm saying? We're not trading at giant sizes. I used to trade with like $4 million accounts. Yep. I, you know, it's totally different times, you know? Um, so my point being is it doesn't take much money, much capital. It's how you trade, the proper process. It's what yields the money, guys. Alex today yeah. made fucking eight grand off of probably a forty something thousand dollar account, right? It was actually thirty five thousand because my wire went out yesterday. So there we you. go. See, I'll we Alex and I pretty much trade about the same thing, you know. So today so, was an eight thousand dollar day, less the forty three thousand in equity. So it's about thirty five thousand I was with at the starting of the day. There we go, guys. You you, you saw there. There's no bullshit. We trade. Pretty much the smaller account that you guys trade. If you see any of these guys start trading these, oh, I'm going to create a small account challenge. This is our small account challenge. $35,000 yeah. is a small account compared to the hundreds of thousands of million dollar accounts that we trade, right? And I have exactly. a bigger account, obviously, but I don't use it because, you know, I don't need it. Less money that. is better too, man, because the more money you have in there, the more sloppy you can get. I use the bigger account to swing, but I, I lately the, the – the swing opportunities is just too scary for me. So if you're a purely day trader, guys, your goal is just to make a few hundred bucks a day. You don't need much money. People think that you need all this kind of money. You know, the first thing you really need is the education. You need, wait, where'd she go? <laughs> what? Uh, I think you scared her <laughs> off, dude. I think you fucking scared her. <laughs> Maybe she saw me lose. She's looking for you, Alex. <laughs> but, but, you know, that, that's the thing. So, so with that in mind, which leads to this, guys. You know, I, I, we've been working on this DVD. The reason I bring up with this education is that, you know, I'm not here to fucking try to make money off of you guys. This is more of like, dude, we, we want you guys to learn. And you just saw how little money you need in your, in your stock account to do this. I okay? used 2,000 shares on that stock, and I think it was at 650 So what is that? Uh, $13,000 worth of cash to make that fucking – it's fucking crazy. So this all leads up to this, guys. You have, you, you have to start somewhere. It's a very, I mean, starting anything new is it's very difficult. But we are here yeah. to help you. There are thousands of members in MIC and on IG Live right now. Who's in uh, MIC right now, guys? What do you guys think? You guys all excited also for that DVD coming, right? You want to talk about that, Alex? So this is, this is going to be the game changer. This is why I, I want you guys to get at the very minimum, guys. Get this DVD. We, we hate calling it DV because it's bad. It's, it's more of an accelerator course. Yeah. Seven-hour accelerator jumpstart. Yeah, so let me explain it. Uh, so 
we have, I think we're almost at like 800 videos for members. We have 670 videos for free on YouTube, but we realize that that's a lot of education and a lot of things. So we want to kind of create something that could give you like a jump start or kind of accelerate your learning curve. So we created the seven hour course and it's not recycled information of other videos. It's a brand new dedicated own piece of content that takes you from not knowing anything about trading to placing your first trade in seven hours. The way that most people are using this course is they are using it to build their trading foundation, right? Just like a house, you have to build your foundation first. They are using it to build their trading foundation. And then when they want to add stuff like paintings or sofas or the little details, they go into the video library, they type in the topic they're looking for, let's say first red day, and then they get bombarded with all the first red day videos. So as a member, you have access to the entire video library. So you could use it in unison, the course and the library to help uh, improve the places that you are missing. So if you watch the course and you have questions on float rotation or you need more help on float rotation, right? Float rotation into the library. Let me actually do it right now. And, and the, the difference is this, this, this course, this accelerate course, as well as the courses in MIC are the same strategies that we use, Alex and I yep. use to trade. It's not like we do something differently. You know, we make it so that, you know, we do exactly what you do. And we, and Alex actually has the watch list. Show them the watch list, man. Yep. Let me show and them that, this that, that's video how you library. Learn. You, you know, people want alerts. Fuck the alerts. You know what's more important? The mindset, the process. Because every day we put out a watch list. And every day is what Alex trades on that watch list. We trade the stocks that are on the watch I, list. Exactly. APDN on the watch list was a 10 line. And I trade at 9.95. So... Those, when people go, oh, w alerts, fuck the alerts. That is the better alert. The mindset, the process, we actually give you the lines. You just straight up copy it. We don't advise it. But th the point is, it's a guide. You learn and then you try to match your watch list with this watch list. And then you can reverse engineer. That's, and that, it, you know, that's the revolution thing that we did. Most of these other services will give you stock picks. What they'll do is they'll alert shit on the microphone. Why? Because I already bought it. You're a dumbass to be chasing their shit. Buy, buy, buy. I'm like, I already bought that shit five minutes ago, motherfucker. You stupid. And the moment you hit buy, they're, they're hitting hot key to sell, 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 sell. Yeah. Yep. Don't be a sucker, guys. Don't be a sucker. I hate that shit. I don't want to be anything involved in that shit. I told. So that's the beauty of MIC. It's, it's, I'm telling you, I, I've never been in a chat room where no one's pumping any stock. They're just telling you what the stock is doing. They're telling you their game plan ahead of the time. They're not pumping. Boom, boom, boom. You never you don't hear boom. You don't hear go, go, go. Woo, woo. Yeah, I, hate <laughs> I hate that shit. Wee, wee. <laughs> oh, man. Because I've been involved in all those rooms, man. Just of the course, shit bro. Me. Of course. It's all the scam bullshit, man. They draw you in and they fucking fleece you alive, man. Can you get Faye on a live call? We, we, we got her on the, uh, an old call. You can look up yeah, on we have live. it. We have it on YouTube, too. So if Alex has time, he can tweet it, and then whoever wants to see the interview with Faye, uh, you can go on go right Twitter. Now. Yeah. I'll go right now. Faye becoming famous. <laughs> but that's it, man. Now, Faye, can you teach that other girl to trade? <laughs> I just gave her a lifetime every tip for some reason. So. <laughs> no, but... uh. All right, bro. Faye, 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 uh, Faye has no makeup today. That's it. It's out there. Just cool, cool guys. So um, that's it. I mean, unless you guys have any more questions, maybe I can bring one person in. Who who wants to get on? Besides Faye. All right, I'll see you later, Bob. All right, thanks, Alex. Yeah, guys, text Tosh because I'm going to tell you something, uh, one quick blur about the DVD thing. For a limited time, when we launch it, which is in a, in, in a couple of weeks, we are going to give free for every current annual and lifetime. So if you are a current annual or lifetime, you get it. After the first month, no more. It's going to be like, we're going to charge like a thousand bucks for it because we have to. It's, it's six months of work and it can't be free forever. No one's going to appreciate that. So, so don't wait now. Sign up now and you'll get it as it comes out because we may even restrict it to the first couple hundred people that get it for free. 
because you know we we don't want people to come in and they think that this is like something that should be free all the time because it's like dude six months of work and you have to put in the work man if you if you don't fuck if you can't just join mic i i don't understand like how can you give shit for free right um anyways guys anybody wants to get on otherwise i'll get off i don't want to get too long on this so text tosh no secret code today guys sorry <laughs> the secret code is gonna be you you'll get the dvd when it comes out it's pretty imminent guys Great, guys. Okay, I will. Let me bring up David. I don't know who this guy is. David Fontanot. Cool. We'll end it with this. The large cap room. I don't trade large caps much. I'm in the main room, but the techniques and the lines and stuff that Joe Kelly is doing is all from the strategies that I trade too. Hey, what's up, brother? What's going on, man? How are you doing, you man? Doing yep. good. <laughs> Where you at? Where, tell everybody your name and all that good stuff. Cole from Tennessee. Cole from Tennessee. Yeah. Hey, you, you're in MIC? Yes, sir. You're the Cole. Yeah, I'm the Cole. <laughs> Is that Cole? What is that Cole Cash or Cole Colton or something? Cole, Cole Cash. You're right. Yeah, there we go. I got you, man. Where, well, you're from Tennessee. Are you work right now? Yeah, I'm at work, but I, I trade. I trade from... 8.30 to about 11.30, and then I go out and actually kind of do some other work. That, that's the best way to do it because that's the time that I always end up losing anyways, right? So you, you, yeah. you get the easier trades. So how's it going? How long have you joined? How long have you been trading, and how is it coming along? I've been trading for probably about a year and a half, two years now on options. Uh, found MIC early last month, you know, going through the whole quarantine stuff, was just trying to find something, trying to find a new edge. And – Man, I'm not gonna. I've been in a couple chat rooms, and MIC by far is the best chat room I've been in. I mean, just take yesterday for example, when I, shoot, I, I messed up and lost a little bit of money, but went in there, put in my post, put my loss, and you know, y'all let me know, hey, this is what you did wrong. This is where you need to get at. This is what you need to get fixed. So right. I mean, I just, just from all that, man, I can't, I can't say enough about how much I just like, enjoy it, man. I appreciate everything. It's great. Yeah, we, we want you guys to learn. That's the bottom line. You, you notice that people make money, and they don't make anybody feel bad. I, I hate these places where they go, oh, I'm, I'm the best. You know, I short this, you loser, you know. I hate that stuff. So you know what I mean, right? So Yeah, so I know. I, 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 lo I love the fact that you're keeping it classy. I mean, how how many people is willing to share a loss? That's very big of you, man. That's that's like, that's like you know, having to have self-confidence and not feel like, hey, I'm stupid or something. Because you know what, man? It, we're all learning, man. That's why I love, I love coming on and saying I fucked up every day. Because I fuck up every day, you know? <laughs> and if, you, if I can fuck up every day and still make money, that's a very good chance that you guys can still fuck up and make money. You don't have to be perfect. That's, that's the yeah, so You don't have to be perfect. I told my wife that yesterday. I was talking to her last night. I was just like, yeah, you know, I posted. I lost a little bit of money yesterday, but I made it back up. And she was just like, well, why would you post that in the room? And I was just like, because that's what everybody does. I was like, even bowing out, it's when they lose money, because they know you by first name, by the way. She knows you by oh. first name. <laughs> What's up? She, yeah. She was just like, well, why do I do that? I was like, because it's it's a learning process. I mean, they're here to teach you, and they're here to help. And I'm like, all these other chat rooms, where they just tell you what to buy. I was like, you know, this is a whole different thing. So, I mean, if anybody's not signed up for MIC, they just dumb. I mean, they're just trying to lose money. Uh, what, what do you do for a living, man? Where, where, the, the work is still going on. They, they, they lifted the the banner. Yeah, I work at State Farm, so I do uh, insurance and everything. And here in, in in the area where I'm at, we had some major tornadoes come through here last week and like Ooh. decimated like probably about three or four square miles of houses and stuff. So I've been pretty busy with that. So that, that just shows you, man. I mean, you you find the time, you make the time. You don't make any excuses. A lot of these guys are like, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy on time. Right there, you're making the time to do it. Yeah. It's crazy because I make more money doing stocks right now than I do working full-time at this other job. Well, I hope you keep it up, man. Anything we need. So tell us what your game plan is in terms of education-wise. Like, what are you trying to learn on? What are you working on? Just to, uh, and What's your process? Just tell the guys the process. Well, right now, what I'm lurking, learning, what I'm lurking on right now is just basically trying to get my entries and exits and really learning my lines. Uh, what I've been doing for the longest time is scalping. Uh, for, for me, that comes easy. I got, you know, ADD, so I'll, I'll go in and go out real quick, fast, and in a hurry. But really just my exit strategy and managing my risk, that's the biggest thing that I'm learning right now.
That, that's exactly right. We talked about it today. It's line to line. And the risk management is what keeps you in the game when you fuck up. I fuck up so many times today, but my stops were on point. So I survived. And that's what it is. So the first thing that every trader needs to focus on is not making money, in my opinion. If you can make money, you can make money 10 days in a row, but you lose that one day, you wipe out your account. It doesn't mean shit, right? So right. Risk, risk management is the way to do it. And the only way to do it is to do risk management. Just have to fucking do it. Put hard stops, take the loss, and be comfortable with losing a little bit. Because if you're not comfortable losing, losing a little bit, you're going to lose your life later on the road, right? It's like a right. boxer. It's like a boxer. If any boxer doesn't spar and get knocked out in practice, he's going to be scared shitless when he goes in the ring because he doesn't know what it feels like to be knocked out. Yep. So, if you, you know, so I, I, I take paper cuts all day long. I've, I've lost big. I've lost small. So I wanted to tell you guys, like, you know what, man? You have to get comfortable taking losses because we all lose. So the risk management is, is the proper way to use hard stops. So if, if you're starting new guys, make the good habits by using hard stops. Yep, that's the big thing. It saved me today on RVP. Oh, today? You, you, yeah. you, you hear it like me too? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, but thanks, man. Thanks, Cole. I'll see you in the room, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it for sure. It, huh? All right, Later. man. Keep it up. Keep up the work. Oops. Thanks, Cole. Well, there you go. Uh, he just joined last month. And I, I thought he was going to come here to kick my butt, but <laughs> Mr. Cole is a, <laughs> is a big man. <laughs> I appreciate it, Cole. Thank you. Um, he's serious. So, I mean, trading is serious, guys. I, I love the fact that we, we're meeting people around the, the world. Tennessee, wow. I'm glad that, you know, that a lot of the countries are still back at work. Unfortunately, there's a tornado. Holy crap. There's a tornado. There's a murder, hornet, everything. But anyways, guys, we'll see you back in the room. Any questions, text Tosh. And you know where to reach me. I'm always open as well, guys. Thanks, guys. What's up, Mr. Porter? And Danny.